from Hell's Kitchen in New York City. It's the Cube on the ground at Serverless Con. Brought to you by Silicon Angle Media. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman with the Cube here at Serverless Conference in Hell's Kitchen in New York City. Happy to welcome back to the program a uh, keynote speaker here at the event and, and a guest that we've had on a, a couple of other times before, John Willis, who's the Vice President of DevOps and Digital Practices at SJ Technologies. John? In Hell's great, Kitchen. In Hell's Kitchen and hey. uh, go Yankees. Yeah, man. I was at the game last night, the other night. Yeah, we'll see tonight. Um, yeah. Good Thank you. Thank Glad you. to be here. Great to see you. Yeah. So, uh, look, you, you've been talking to audiences about DevOps uh, for, for you know as, as long as I can remember, as long as I've, I've known you, definitely. Uh, tell us, you know, what's you know so important about serverless and how that fits into kind of the world of the developer these yeah, days? Yeah, I mean, my interest, um, you know, I was invited to a keynote, um, and my interest is this um, to break down the tribal nature of new things. And, and I sound like a hypocrite because I'm in the DevOps tribe, but like I, I prefer to just stop calling it DevOps because um, there are super patterns that exist. And as I watch serverless, I, uh, I spent a lot of time having these conversations around um, that, yeah, we don't need that DevOps anymore because we got serverless. It was the same reason like we didn't need any of the infrastructure stuff because we got cloud. Yeah. And like we keep throwing the baby out with the bathwater. And, and my presentation this morning was like, it's not about the technology, stupid. It, you know, like the principles of business value, how you understand value stream, how you inject the governance, the policy, the security, the, the values and the outcomes that you want. I know they sound like platitudes. Yeah. Like, like I, I, I get a sense that we're making the same mistake over again. I, hey, sorry folks, serverless is just another form of compute. <laughs> sorry to get you all wound up and then let you down. It's just compute, folks. And so all the core principles that we've really learned about high performance organizations apply. They apply differently. Monitoring is differently. How do we deliver? But the principles stay the same. And that, that was my, my core message yeah, today. Yeah, no, no, very, very passionate. Def definitely came through uh, in the keynote. I got to ask you, just on the tech for a second, I mean, you, you were heavily involved in, in, in containers, uh, you, you were you know, part of a company that got acquired by Docker, uh, you were a big proponent of unikerner, unikernels, uh, now serverless, how, how, how I, do you kind of paint I that picture? I think it's amazing tech, and, uh, I, yeah. I'm more, you know, these days, um, so I, I left Docker and I'm going back to something I did 10 years ago, which is kind of consulting, but transformation type consulting, and it sounds platitude-ish, but, but like I, I'm back in the mode of like looking at things at bigger scale. How do you change an organization to think differently about things? So, so I've kind of taken a little bit of my tech hat off. I mean, I love containers and immutable delivery. Right? I've been yakking about that for like the last two or three years, right? About how immutable delivery models work. And serverless is like amazing too. Like, like um, you know, Unikernels was an interesting model of you know function as a service. I think serverless will eat up a good portion. You know, I, I've said this, and I, I don't know, maybe I'll have to modify it. You know, I'd say four years ago, three years ago, you guys have been a big part of this discussion. Um, the world went to, most companies would say we're a cloud-first organization. Yeah. I've been saying for the last couple of years, I think most organizations should now thinking that they're a container-first organization. So that doesn't like say everything, it just means, and I think the world now should be kind of still container-first, and I know that might sound horrible to serverless people, but then look at service, functions as a place where it fits in the architecture, repeatability mm. and containers. And, and there's actually kind of a... Yeah. Is, is that just from a maturity standpoint, you know, containers a little bit more mature than serverless? Um, uh, I, I don't know or? that it's, I think there are, like, there are models of architecture, right? And I don't know that, I mean, I know there's a lot of successful startups and certain value streams in enterprises that are all serverless. I know a couple of friends that have built complete infrastructure on Amazon Lambda. It works. I just don't know that all value stream delivery of services will go complete serverless. I do, I'm pretty certain that today almost all applications can run on containers. So I'm not, I'm not creating a division of war, I'm just saying that I think, and I could be dead wrong on this, but I think in, in this future like placeholder where we're container first, it's going to be, give me an exception of why it can't be containers left. Like it has to be cloud or it has to be bare metal or it has virtual. And the right side is about mapping reusable functionality in functions. So I think you have, like a container first world assumes that smart architecture mandates 
repeatable functions in a function-like world. Does that make sense? Yeah, it, it, it does. So, you know, I, I think back in my career, and there's so many times we've said like, oh, we've got this new way to really simplify the environment and get rid of things you don't need to worry about. You know, I, I lived through the whole virtualization. Oh wait, networking storage took us a decade right, yeah, yeah, to yeah, fix yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, containers, oh, we're going to just focus on the application. Oh wait, networking, really important. You, you worked on a whole company, you know, focused specifically on that. DevOps again, and networking, serverless, yeah. Serverless, the, the question is, you know, what's the role of operations oh. when it comes to, you know, serverless? That, again, that's my, so my, my thoughts on serverless and today, right, like that's, that's secondary to my real passion right now, which is, like when I hear the word no ops for serverless, I cringe. Um, like this idea that you don't, I mean, it's different. Um, do you need observability and uh, telemetry in a serverless world? I ask you. Of course you do. Um, do you need to have repeatable patterns of delivery to make sure you don't have vulnerabilities in your code? Of course you do. <laughs> That's ops, folks. And it's about supply chain and building repeatable structured delivery with all the gates and the checks and the units. And I, I don't, none of that, I believe, goes away with serverless. Just like it didn't go away with cloud, just the way it didn't go with virtualization, right? Um, so, um, so I think you know we make a big mistake to think serverless means we don't need operations. Now, does it mean that our providers, we have a different relationship with our providers? We don't own the server anymore. Right. So we can't run D-Trace or those kind of things in that environment. But we still own the service. So who's the site reliability engineer for the service that's running on Lambda? Or functions or serverless, right? Yeah. If it ain't, if, it's, if, if you don't have got one, like you're going to have a bad service. Yeah. Uh, what, what are you hearing organizationally? What, what's happening in companies that you're talking to? Uh, you know, was that a show recently? Uh, no, I think it was. You know, Kelsey Hightower. I think was like, you know, DevOps is you know a given at this point. So, you know, do you see that? You know, wh wh where is where's the line? Well, you, you know, know the, what are you the 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 curse and the blessing of DevOps. Uh, the curse is we've never had a clear definition of it. I say we, you know, everybody. But but then the 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 blessing is we've never had a clear definition. Like, we've, it's always emerged. And, and the problem is, um, you know, I will tell you what my definition of DevOps is. It has really very little to do with technology. It has to do with human capital and how you create high performing organizations and the principles and practices that lead to that. The DevOps handbook, if you will, is a lot about the, that I co-authored with Gene and, and Patrick and uh, Jez. Um, those things, uh, that's my definition of DevOps. But the problem is, when you hear people have discussion about DevOps, in, in lieu of a good definition, it, you can't really get upset when somebody thinks DevOps is like Jenkins and Chef or Puppet and Ansible, and like, oh no, you're wrong, right? Like, that's their like view. So the problem that you run into then is, if your definition is that it's pure technology and it's tied to kind of cloud and like something like infrastructure as code, then like in your world, in your definition, serverless, is going to make all that obsolete, or a good portion obsolete. But if your definition is more about how you create patterns and practices around humans who deliver services a certain way, then nothing about service, serverless obsolete makes that any of that obsolete. All right, John, want to give you the final word. You know, what, what, what do you think people that, you know, just hearing about serverless the first time, where do they start? What, oh. what kind of things should they, should, should they look at? Um, or, you know, they, 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 there's other things you think they should probably look at first. I, you <laughs> know, the, um, I think you're asking the wrong guy for that, really. I think there's um, far better people that you've interviewed to give that. I mean, I, you know, I would go with um, Peter's book, the, the founder of this uh, conference. That was yeah. a book I read. He gave me a copy. It made sense to me. I was able to do some labs. And then, you know, as they say, the rest, Bob's your uncle. You know, there's a ton of stuff out there to, to figure out how to navigate. Yeah, but. A, a, anything, uh, any comments you'd make on the community for here? I've had a couple of people just, you know, it, it, it's, it's new but very vibrant. It reminds me a lot of the, the emerging tech, uh, you know, that where, you know, a lot of help from the community. Uh, it's pretty easy to get started. Uh, I, I was, so yes, on the technology, yes. A lot of vendors, a lot of good stuff, great conversations. And I was actually pleasantly surprised there was less discussion about no ops or you don't need operations and and I got like kind of a little bit of a cheer when I I mentioned that this morning that like that so it seems like um, there are we're, there are some good lessons learned that that like I, I think that um, I think the message a lot of clear is that operations still exist it just has to be um, thought about the, the keynote yesterday the gentleman in the keynote yesterday said um, day one closing keynote said serverless things are different 
in some cases easier, and but harder in other things. And that was true of cloud. Cloud was much easier from like getting infrastructure, but we ran into a whole lot of operational issues around how to manage cloud at scale. Well, so serverless is easy to create a function, get it set up, cost effective, but we're, gonna, we're starting to learn all of the complex operational issues of you know, MTTR, how do you restore stuff? How do you, what does SRE look like? I mean, again, it just, this is why we get paid the big bucks there, man. All right, John Willis, always a pleasure to catch up right. with you. I'm Stu Miniman, thank you so much for watching theCUBE. Yeah.